three, two, one. You guys. I just wanted to um record this. This is like my reaction after. You guys have no idea. Of course you have no idea because I haven't really been posting. But I'm going to give you an idea. Things have been so crazy. And just like, you know, having a preemie. And then like semi-homeschooling. I say semi-homeschooling because he's going through a virtual program. He was going through Epic. But then I switched him to K-12 because Epic doesn't have everyday classes like with the live teacher but k-12 does and that's what jude you guys know jude that's what jude needed it's because i just was stretched too thin <sighs> everything i knew about babies just throw it away <laughs> because having a premium is different it is different so everything that i thought was just easy no nah. No, I mean, it'll get easier, but he's still on oxygen, you know, and then just this week, he was diagnosed with RSV and pneumonia. Who knew that you can have RSV and pneumonia at the same time? Maybe you knew that. I didn't know that. I thought it was like, you know, something can turn into pneumonia or turn into RSV, but not, oh, um, you have RSV and pneumonia. The preemie. Like, my other children have never had pneumonia, ever. <laughs> I've never had pneumonia. So I have no idea what that's like. I don't want to know. Um, my dad told me that one of my siblings had RSV. None of my children ever have ever had RSV. I've heard about it. You know, I know it's tough on babies. Had other babies in the family. So keep all that in mind. And then my little Oliver, my little premature infant, has RSV and pneumonia, and he's a preemie, and he's on oxygen. <laughs> ah, so much has been going on, you guys. I'm still running my business. I'm still teaching on out school. I have not opened Cambly in months, okay? I can only imagine how many messages I have on Cambly, because I have not even opened Cambly. I keep getting emails. We want you back. We miss you from Cambly. Okay. So I'll tutor on Cambly soon. But I say all that to say that I have been beating myself up because I am still teaching full time as an eighth grade middle school English teacher for K-12 Stride. And I told you guys I love it. I really do. I told you guys I was going to do a video on how to get hired and an update on Stride. And I have not gotten around to it. Because every waking moment, if it's not working, you know, teaching. If it's not teaching, it's my children. Like, even my businesses have kind of, you know, I've been slacking in my businesses that I run. And I'm also like a board member of a nonprofit organization that I have been like, and I'm writing, I'm doing a ghostwriting project. And there are like two books of my own that I'm trying to release. I'm trying to do all this. And everything's taking a whole lot longer than it normally would. You guys know me, you know me. And so I've been struggling because you guys also know me. I'm, I won't let anything go. <laughs> I'm like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I know I can do all things. Just the going has been tough. You know the saying, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. The going has been tough. And this tough right here has been going and going and going. Jude, turn that down just a little bit. Jude. Jude. Turn that down just a little bit. It's our lunchtime right now. I actually took a half day today because I had to take baby boy 
little Oliver to his follow-up appointment to check on his RSV and his pneumonia and his oxygen, which he's at 99% right now. So he's doing really good with his oxygen. But the bad thing is we were trying to wean him off of oxygen, but now that he has RSV and pneumonia, it's been bumped up higher than it has been since before he even got released from the hospital, from the NICU. Is I mean, it hasn't been his oxygen level his oxygen use hasn't been this high since before then. So I'm just like, we're taking not a step back, but we have taken like three monster kangaroo hops in the backwards direction. But it's, you know, anything to keep him comfortable. And you guys have probably heard babies getting hospitalized because of RSV. And Oliver has not. He's so strong. So strong, you guys. So he's battling RSV at home. He is not being hospitalized. I have to monitor his oxygen levels. I have to make sure he's taking some type of fluids all around the clock. No IVs. And he's a preemie. He is so strong. Born one pound, 13 ounces. And he is so strong. I've been beating myself up. And uh, trying to make, you know, teaching perfect with the baby. Because I stay home and teach virtually. I don't have anybody here with me to help with the baby. So it's just me, Oliver, and Jude while I'm teaching. And yesterday I had a formal observation. So yes, you brick and mortar teachers, you know how you have observations by administration when they come in and watch you teach and kind of grade you? Yeah, you still get that when you're teaching virtually. So I had a formal observation that was scheduled for two weeks ago. Okay, it was scheduled for two weeks ago before we went to Florida. Ah, there's another story there. I, you guys, I, I have so much catching up to do. The company sent us teachers to Florida. There's a video on that that I'm going to make. So my observation, I wanted to get it done and out of the way before we left. And it was canceled because the principal had a terrible toothache. And so that was, I mean, I was ready. I mean, I had created a lesson just for this observation. This was the planned observation, not one of those walkthroughs. It was a planned observation. I had a lesson scheduled and ready just for this. I did all this research on this topic. Like, yeah, I had like clips and all. Man, I was going to knock it out the park. But you know what? God said something different. So it was canceled. I was like, oh, seriously, I put in all this work. But I was like, you know what? Take care of yourself. Get your teeth fixed. Yeah, no problem. You know, she comes first. She comes first. She's a whole person. And so it was rescheduled. Yesterday was when I just took the day off to kind of just be with it was it yesterday? It was Monday. Monday, I took the day off because that's when Oliver was having like a difficult time breathing and his coughing. And it's like babies cry, right? Every time he cried, he couldn't breathe. He was like, <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. He was like, <clears throat> and then it scared me. So I took him to the emergency room and I, I, you know, I had got him to calm down before I took him. So he was calm, but that one little episode he had had scared me. It was just one episode. And then throughout the night, he was irritable and fussy, and I didn't sleep. So Monday morning, I took him to the emergency room after I dropped the big kids off at school. And that's when he was diagnosed with RSV and pneumonia. This was Monday, November 15th, okay? Just a couple days ago, November 15th. So then today... No, yesterday, yesterday, the 16th. <laughs> no, forgive me. The same day on the 15th, um, my principal had messaged me. He was like, hey, how's Oliver? And I was like, oh, you know, told her the diagnosis and everything. She was like, okay, um, I need to get these observations out the way before we go on fall break. So I need to observe you this week. And I'm like,
you already know. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just came from the hospital. But I know, you know, I still have a job to do. And she has a job to do. She's a principal. She has to get this done. So I'm just like, ah, uh, okay. So she had me pick either today, which is Wednesday. No, today's Wednesday. She had me pick either the next day, which was Tuesday. She said, you can get observed Tuesday at 2.15 p.m. Or Thursday at 10.15 a.m. And you know me, I'm just like, let's just do it. Let's just get it out of the way. I had no special lesson plan. I was like, she's going to see an everyday lesson. She just going to see some keeping it real everyday lesson without the bells and whistle, without me going out of the way to do anything extraordinary. And in my mind, I was like, she's going to see it and she's just going to have to deal with that. And we'll just see. Because at this point, I'm like, I'm just too tired. Just too tired. So Tuesday comes around yesterday, right? Because today's Wednesday, the 17th. Tuesday, the 16th, observation day. I'm kind of on pins and needles because Oliver's cranky and I've had to like stop in the middle of a couple of classes and kind of quiet him down and, you know, unprofessional, right? But I'm like, my baby comes first. So if somebody's going to complain that my baby's crying and I have to stop, I'll suffer the consequences. So 2.15 comes around. I had already made sure Oliver, like it was, I'm so thankful. It was like his nap time. So he was asleep. Fed, happy, sleep, not crabby. I had everything situated to where he was like in his chair where my foot can kind of rock him when he started. Eh, eh. And I was like rocking him with my foot like off camera to kind of soothe him and whatnot. And so lights, camera, action. I pop into the class and I'm there early and I'm like, you can do it, LaShondra. You can do it. Just another day in the neighborhood. Then the principal pops in. No students yet. Hi, LaShondra. I was like, hey, how you doing? She's like, how is Oliver? And I was like, yeah, no, no students have popped in yet. This is the class where they normally pop in at the last minute. Class was supposed to start at two minutes, in two minutes. And normally I have some students that are already in there just waiting for class to start or just chatting with me or chatting with each other. Nobody. Okay. Nobody. Normally I have about 18 students in the class. Only 11 people showed up. Weird, right? So 11 people showed up and everything I had planned, like it was like, I was worried that Jude or Oliver were going to give me a hard time and I was going to get in trouble for that. Oh no, my kids were perfect. Thank you, Lord. Perfect. But then the, my students were like, just out of character. They were all off topic, but I was just being mean. So I had like a lesson where... Uh, I'm going to have to show you guys clips of this lesson. So right here is telling me that teacher uses the progression of standard-based learning targets embedded with the performance scale to identify accurate critical content during a lesson or part of the lesson. And she put me as applying. She said 11 out of 12 students responded to the learning scale poll at the beginning of class acknowledging their level of understanding when class began now that's good i mean that's good that's one away from innovating and it's difficult to get innovating okay and this is my first full year teaching middle school i came from the elementary world so i'm i'm you guys and then for this one Teacher uses a sequence of increasingly complex questions that require students to cr critically think about the content. And again, I got applying. And look at the feedback. Seven out of 12 students responded to your request to create a catchy first sentence based on the picture you provided. I thought this was a great way to get them thinking and to enable them to be creative. This also is a great incorporation of the pre-AP strategies we learned about to have students answer questions that don't have a right or wrong answer and then she gave me a suggestion about using nearpod which i do use but i did not use for this lesson so but that was a really good suggestion i'm always open for um you know any, any constructive criticism just like you guys know if somebody if i make a mistake i'd be like oh my bad teacher engages students in brief review of content that highlights the cum cumulative nature of the content and again, I got applying. This is really good because I went from beginning, developing to applying. So 
So I'm showing growth in all of these areas. And then we have teacher uses engagement strategies to engage or re-engage students with the content. And again, I got applying. And she really liked how I gave students boss status and bumped them to the top when they respond to the original question. Okay, you guys. I mean, this was just, like I said, I didn't even plan like an observation type lesson. I was like, well, this is just an everyday lesson. I just don't have the time or energy because it was like a last minute. Oh, well, I need to observe you this week. And I was like, the day before this evaluation, I just said, okay, well, I'll take tomorrow. And whatever I had already had planned, that's what she saw. I didn't do anything extra. And this is what I got. And it really just brought me, you saw the tears. <laughs> You saw it. I just, you know, I just need to just stop second guessing myself. I just really do need to stop guess second guessing myself. I just love it. And then she just said she's glad I'm part of the school. And there you go. I'm, you guys. I had like all types of stuff and you know, I was bringing the energy and then lo and behold, we had like eight minutes of class left. And the students were already a little nervous because of the quiz or whatnot. But I gave them like a, a grading scale. So I was like, hey, you know, if you do this many, have this many, you get this many. So there were only four questions, but it was like almost impossible to fail because of the way that I had the grading scale. So it wasn't your normal miss one, you get a 75%. Miss two, it's a 50%. It wasn't like that. It was like. You miss, you get all of them, you get 100%. You miss one, you get a 90. You miss two, you get an 80. You miss three, you get a 70. You miss four, you get a, uh, I said, if you miss all of them, you get a 60 for your efforts of trying and being in attendance. But I real, I would recommend you do it again. If you're not responding and you're not participating, you get a zero. That's how I did it. You get a zero. If you're absent today, a zero goes in the grade book until you make it up. You're going to have to do it on your own. And there's a link. So that's how I had it. Like, awesome, right? I'm rocking it. I'm rocking it. When I say rocking it, like, just I'm just doing me. Just Ms. Wigfall. Lala's class, right? Eight minutes before the end of class. I kid you not. There's no storm. There's nothing. Everything just said, bloop, bloop. I'm talking my power. Just bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> power just went out for like three seconds. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. I was just like, laptop is going, so I can see everybody, but everybody's like, why? Because the modem, the internet is gone. I have to wait for the modem to reset because the power went out, right? So it doesn't matter if the laptop has power, there's no internet. So I'm like, ah! the principal is in the room with all the students and I'm like, and I'm not there. So, and I was screen sharing. So everything I was screen sharing, the screen had to have went black, right? Which it did. When I came back, I noticed it did, it was black. It's not like they can continue the quiz because I was screen sharing the quiz. And so everything's black. The whole class is at a halt. Everything rests on my shoulder. Class is leaving is ending in eight minutes. Everything was up to me. So I'm like, I'm trying to use my phone as a hotspot. So I'm like, turning on the hotspot, typing in the password. Oh, we're in the settings. Okay. Restarting the browser, going in, logging back in, getting back in the class. Because, you know, I had to refresh everything. There, it was like, bloop, bloop. The little dinosaur is like, I'm sorry, your internet has been... Uh, no, what does it say? I'm sorry, there's no internet connection. The little dinosaur telling me there's no connection. I'm just like, yeah. So, by this time, okay, when I'm nervous, I don't sweat in my face. Like, my, my face doesn't sweat. I don't get all, like, sweaty here. My armpits sweat. My armpits and my back. It's embarrassing. Like when I work out, people are like drenched in sweat. Oh no. I have big armpit circles and a back rectangle when I work out. There's a back rectangle, probably some booty sweat, and humongous armpit ovals. Okay. Like my armpit sweat drips down 
my sides. It's embarrassing. I'd rather just sweat like here, but I don't. So I'm doing that inside of my clothes. I'm hot. My body feels like an inferno. I'm hot because I'm nervous. So I'm, my body is sweating. My, like all this is sweating. I get back into the classroom. There's like a ton of <sighs> Message in the chat. Where'd she go? Oh my gosh, my quiz. Uh, uh, can't we just do the quiz on our own? Like, students are upset. Like, their grade is depending on this. But of course, I'm not going to be like, my internet, you get a zero. But they were freaking out. And the principal's in the room while they're freaking out. And Ms. Wigfall is gone. Gone. So I come back to see all this in chat. I have no time to catch up in chat. Because I'm like, okay, we're going to have to wrap up the quiz. I'm trying to apologize that I had disappeared. I'm trying to wrap up the quiz. I'm embarrassed. The principal is not talking to me, but I know the principal was like ch trying to chill the room out. Because I saw her comment in the in the chat like, oh, you guys, this is this is this. And she'll be back. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sure, just, you know, trying to calm the room down. And I'm just like, mm. there was no storm. There was nothing. So why did my internet, why did my power just go bloop, bloop? Boop, boop. I have no idea, but you're probably wondering why is any of this relevant when you started this whole video off with tears? I'm hard on myself and I'm used in the brick and mortar. I was like, when I would get scored by administration, I would get a 4.0 and that's super high. Like that's like perfection. Okay. I would get a 4.0. I was always that innovative teacher, innovating, innovating, innovating. That's the highest score you could get. I was like team leader. I, I mean, I always got perfect scores. And if I got an um, observation that was less than perfect, then I was like, what happened? Like what happened? So I'm just like, after that, I wanted to cry because I was like, I'm going to get a bad score. I'm going to get a bad score. They're going to put me on like this um, plan for, you know, needs improvement. I don't know. It's like, first of all, the lesson was just a regular old lesson. And you guys. What I tell you. I was even venting to my sisters, like, I'm like, it's just so much. It's just so much. And I just need to just stop trying to have everything perfect all the time and just deal with it. And I was like, you know, excuse me. I was like, at this point, I, if she tells me that I just need to go back, I mean, just go through some training or something, I just don't even care. Like, I was so deflated. And I got my observation results today. Those brick and mortar teachers, you probably are familiar with eye observation. So, and then there's the baby crying. So I got to get him. So this is about to end. Can you give him his pacifier, please? And you hear how stuffy he sounds. She gave me... All my scores were great. And she had nothing but wonderful things to say about my teaching techniques and how involved the students were and how she loved different strategies that I used and that she even wanted to incorporate one of the strategies herself. And here I am sitting here thinking that it was just doo-doo. Just doo doo. Give him his pacifier, please. I did. We'll give it to him again for me, please. And this just goes to show, like, we are our worst critics. And she, like, she actually pointed out specifically things that she saw. And I didn't even realize how engaged the students were i didn't realize how in certain points i had 11 students responding 
I didn't know. And then she even put, she like seven out of the 11 answered this. I love how you gave them boss status, which is, a, a, you know, something that I use for my students that show leadership in the class. I go boss status. She pointed that out. And it's something I do every day. And she pointed that out as like a special thing. And I'm just like, huh? Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I got like wonderful scores, just like all across the board in every category, there was growth on my observation. You know, it's all I could do is just be like, thank you, Lord, because I was so deflated that it seemed like everything has been going wrong this week. Monday and then Tuesday, I mean, first the baby was showing horrible signs of like being worse on Sunday. Then it was no sleep. And then there was Monday at the emergency room. Then there was Tuesday. And then Wednesday, today's Wednesday, I took a half day to take him to his follow up doctor's appointment. And then I get this news. <laughs> I got good news from my boss telling me I'm doing a good job. And um, I just wanted to share with you guys that sometimes we're so hard on ourselves because we think it's supposed to look a certain way. But your everyday efforts, somebody is seeing that. Somebody finds your everyday you innovating. Somebody has a takeaway from your everyday you. So when you don't think you're spe you, well, when you don't think you're spectacular, somebody does. And for that I'm grateful. So I hope that this message comes to you with love. And you guys know that I haven't went anywhere. I'm just, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm really trying. There's so much that I've been saving clips and I'm like, oh, I'm going to share these with my subscribers. And I just haven't gotten around to doing it. But I will. Because you're worth it. TT. F. Can you help me with my N? Make it N. With me, with my hand. Make it N. N. <laughs>